Are you going to go broke raiding NACs each week? Confused about what consumables you'll need? We'll show you how to raid NACs on a budget. Hey there, thanks for watching. I'm Dane Tree Rogue bringing you hints, hacks, and no fuss wow guides. So you're heading into NACs and you've been told that it's actually going to be hard this time, and that you'll need many consumables to clear the content. I don't know about you, but how is anyone supposed to afford all that? Well, we take a closer look at which fights need what potions, and how you can raid NACs on a budget. Most of the consumables lists I've seen seem to be based on whether a boss has raid damage and, if so, tells you to buy a greater protection pot or two for that type of damage. But is it really all that necessary? Of the 10 bosses where protection potions might come into play, some are must-haves and others not so much. By taking a close look at each fight and examining the raid damage, we've been able to save 40% on Nax consumes on our server, which equates to a saving of 81 gold off this recommended list. And if you factor in some wipes, we calculate a saving of 160 gold for each week of progression. We'll quickly go through each bit of damage and explain how you can budget too. First up, we'll look at Anubra Khan. For melee, there is a nature damage aura which you need to run away from. It ticks for 1k and really, you shouldn't be taking more than one tick. One standard nature protection potion will absorb two ticks, so we don't really need a greater here. Fairlina does a Poison Bolt which if it isn't dispelled does 1800 damage total. A standard pot will cover this. The Rain of Fire ticks for 2k, but be on your toes and you'll be fine. A standard Fire Pot will absorb most of a tick if you do happen to like standing in fire. Next up is Dance Dance Hygen. To be honest, I think having the greater pots up your sleeve is the best move here, especially while you're learning the dance. Standard pots should save you from being one shot, but you'll need a greater heal which isn't ideal. We've put down two standard nature pots here for those on a budget. Lotheb is a bit like Vesidius in AQ, where you basically have to pay to win. No heals and plenty of raid damage means that we need to be using every consumable cooldown on the best possible consumables. Grobulus is a tough one to gauge. There are a lot of things that can go wrong on this fight. This pot really is insurance though, and shouldn't be needed once the fight is learned. Coming prepared with two standard nature pots is much cheaper than a greater, and absorbs more total damage. Thaddeus doesn't hit hard, so if you need greater protection potions on this fight, then you have bigger problems at hand. I think two standard nature pots should be more than enough to absorb the chain lightning damage. If you've got any hot tips to save gold in Nax, let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Stick around for the rest of the list and work out how much gold you can save. Gothic is divided into two sides, and heals will probably be limited on the dead side where the melee are, so melee might want some arcane pots as well as standard shadow pots, although they don't absorb a huge amount, so use your judgement here. The four horsemen fight takes a lot of coordination, but aside from the marks there should be only one raid damage ability hitting players, and that's Meteor, like the big Anubisath guys in AQ. Assuming everyone is stacked perfectly for the Meteor, which can be difficult, there is enough other raid damage going out to warrant the greater fire pots here. Saffron's frost damage is constant and basically unavoidable, so greater frosts are the only choice for this encounter. On to KT. His frost bolts and the frost blast ice trap does build to a decent amount of frost damage going out on the raid. Honestly, you probably should use greater frost for this fight because it will get hectic, but if you can't afford it, a few standard pots would still absorb a ton of damage. Totaling up the recommended pots, at the prices on my server the day before Nax, you're looking at 192 gold, if you one-shot every boss. If we do Nax on a budget, it's more like 111 gold, a saving of 81 gold or 42%. But that's probably not going to happen. So let's say you one-shot all the easier bosses, and maybe take three attempts to down the more difficult ones, which might still be a bit optimistic. We're then looking at 460 gold for a weekly clear, the budget version comes to 302 gold, a saving of about 160 gold for every week of progression. The other great thing about the budget version is that it is much less punishing on the pocket if, or when, you do wipe. Of course, there is a bare minimum version too for once Nax is on farm, but I wouldn't go this cheap yet. Nax will need all 40 people working together with similar gear and consumes, and you don't want to be the one who causes a wipe because you don't have a potion. So what do you actually take to your first raid night? After week 1 you'll have a much better idea of which bosses you'll be doing, and make sure to ask your raid or guild leader, but you can attempt any wing in any order, so cherry picking the easier fights first makes a lot of sense. 
Given this, I think most guilds will do all of Spider and everything but the final bosses of the other wings, which is an ambitious 10 all up. If I allow for 3 wipes as a contingency on each of these 10 bosses, then I'll need 18 standard nature protections, 6 shadow protection, and 3 fire and greater arcane protection potions. I'll probably take along a few graders of each as well, just in case we're close on a fight and healing or mana is an issue. Now I know all this might be controversial, but the whole point of these consumes is to buy time as we learn the fights. And while greater pots give us the most protection in a single fight, the costs are astronomical. Most standard pots do 70% of the graders at a fraction of the price, meaning that on any single attempt we are absorbing a bit less damage, but overall we can afford to do many, many more attempts. And we're also closer to the end goal of relying less on consumables and more on paying attention to positioning and mechanics. Let us know your thoughts on what's needed for Nax in the comments, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This is Daintree Rogue, Gone Rogue. Thanks for your support, and see you next week.